you know who's been coming really strong uh, is Diana Taurasi <laughs> and her comments uh, about a lot of things, yeah. right? Particularly Caitlin Clark, where she's talked about not just her, but all of the rookies, reality is going to set in. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be able to bust people's asses like you're able to do in college. You're dealing with grown women who got families, who have been legends for quite some time. And then she's also said you have to give yourself grace you know, as a rookie um, because it is going to be a Justin period. You don't have that much time off. But Diana also spoke about the the fascination that people have with young women athletes and then what happens after. And we're going to touch on that. With this jump ball, uh, we're discussing Diana Taurasi uh, made some comments recently um, about the fascination that America has with the young female athlete, whether it's the gymnast, the pitcher, the basketball player, the soccer player. And then when they make it to the pros, it's like, oh, be gone. Like you're an old hag now. And mm -hmm. I just want to get your thoughts. Uh, Cherie, I'll start with you about why do you think that is where we see collectively these women as amazing and so talented as young individuals. But then when they get to the pros, which is the pinnacle, as DT alluded to, it's, oh, lost interest, like, you're washed. I think we have to connect it to culture. I think culture firstly does that to, to women. And not just men. Women, we do it to ourselves. Speaking as, I'll, I'll be 38 in June. And I'm somewhere checking my face. Oh, my God, I'm have a wrinkle here. Uh, it, it's something that goes on in your body where you don't feel like you can, you're can. you at a certain level because you're aging. I'm saying this as a woman, but I think that society in itself is more obsessed with young women than they are seasoned women. Mm. And so now when you take that to sports, now it's we're looked at as, oh, you're over the hill, as you mentioned, Chris. Um, you can only do oh so much. There's limitations that society automatically puts on women who have aged. And then when we see a woman like a Di Diana Taurasi is still here, guys, and she's no spring chicken when it when you think about athletics. There's women her age that have stopped playing. But to watch her be dominant, she's a prime example of we have to start taking those limitations off of women. I go to the men's side. I mentioned this before we even started talking for the show. LeBron James, and rightfully so, is being praised for how incredible he's performing at almost 40 years old, deservedly so. But when we turn the tides and we look at a Gabby Douglas who says, hey, I'm going for the Olympic, I'm right. going for another medal this year. Everybody's like, girl, what, what are you doing going for another medal? You're too old to do that in gymnastics. But if her body's telling her she's not, we need to be celebrating that. And regardless, we need to celebrate a woman that says, hey, I'm going to defy the odds. I'm going to defy what culture says age can age can do and not do. And I'm going to go after it. So I think for whatever reason, and I, again, I don't know outside of these type of conversations, how we change the or recalibrate just societal norms. But I think this is a societal norm that to me goes back to just ancient times. Young girls, young women, they're they're almost idolized in a way. So I appreciate Diana Taurasi bringing it up. And also you look at the women's game, just look at women's basketball, the WNBA, as we know, they don't make uh, to me enough money, but we understand why the league yeah. is still fairly young, all things considered. And it's a certain amount of fanfare and sponsorship that you have to rack in and, and to monetarily be able to support athletes in ways like we're seeing the NBA do, which is not happening. So then they're put in a place where they have to go do other things. But watching what Diana Taurasi has been able to do with Sue Bird with, <clears throat> excuse me, their podcast, and we're watching other players do other things, which I think is great. But again, I just, it's disappointing in a way to see how society has made, has, has said to, to women, you can only do this at this point in time. And if you try to go beyond something's wrong with you, you're illogical. And so I think Diana is pointing to just the illogical nature of all of this. I'm glad she said something about it. Now, again, it's up to media to continue to disseminate these conversations, get them going, do the things that we're doing right now on this show, keep talking about it so that we can normalize women being in their mid to late 30s or even their 40s and doing things that 20 year olds do because it's more than possible. It happens more often than we would say or think. Yeah, Sheree, you nailed it on the head. I don't think we can speak first about the sport if we don't go first to the root or even the seed. And the seed, as you mentioned, is the culture. Men have always been given a longer runway. When we're even speaking about the numbers and how we're at this inflection point for the women's game and how it's doing better than the men's game, you still have to understand and put that in context. So 
when you see that see Sue Bird or even Diana Taurasi still cooking up in the WNBA, people are like, damn, they still playing? Rather yeah. than when they watch LeBron, they're like, oh, wow, like yes. no one's ever been yeah. good, this good for this long. Like, nah, like. There's a way to have a conversation about this and you have to be mindful about the words that you use. I was just going to throw out Gabby Douglas or even Simone Biles yes. taking a step back and be like, come on, girls, like if I was you, but you're not her. You're right. not one of one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like you're yes. literally not less than 1%. She is the best at what she does. Absolutely. You can try a million things and you won't be that great. And that's no shade. But I think once again, it starts with the conversations that we're having together as people, even going back to the Don Lemon comments when he said, pass your prime. Mm -hmm. It's like yes. women haven't given an opportunity, Sheree was mentioning the word, to age gracefully, to get an opportunity to just do what they need to do. It doesn't have to be a but or a comma thrown at the center. It's like, nah, just a period. Like yeah. she's 38, like, and she's still out here crushing it. So I think that it starts with men personally yeah. and then once they can change the conversation and help change the narrative and be advocates and allies then we can do some work on the women's college basketball or professional end but that's going to take a lot of time but it's a part of evolution i'm sending you a care package justin that was incredible <laughs> he, he, he wrapped it up beautifully and uh, yeah we we do as men justin to your point we have to unlearn um all this misogyny um mm. and sexism that has been ingrained into the culture where yo woman could be third in her 30s 40s and she could be a hell of a lot better than she was in her yeah. 20s because of the knowledge that she has yeah, right yeah, yeah. and how she's taking care of her body more or, or better than yeah. when she was younger when she didn't have all the knowledge so i'm glad that we're having this conversation and i do think that we have to be very intentional and aware of how we speak about these women athletes to make sure we're not doing them a disservice 